Hello, it's the 19th of March. Today I'm down my local woodland and I'm collecting some leaves in order to make leaf mould. So I've got plenty of trees here, many of which are oak trees. There's also some evergreens here, such as this holly tree here. I'm going to rake up as many leaves as I can and put them into that bag. Try not to get any sticks if you can help it. And if you can, try and get a little bit of the woodland floor because that'll contain plenty of helpful bacteria in that. Don't collect leaves from anywhere you are not allowed to. Do not land yourself in any trouble. There we are, nice uh, bag of leaves. 27th of March and today we're going to start the making of the leaf mould. So leaves here, lawn mower here, rake here. You can see a tub here. This is about a 200 litre tub. There's another tub here, but ignore this one. This is for another project. So we're going to now empty the leaves onto the floor and cut them up with the lawnmower. Use a rough part of the garden for this, okay? Because it really can make a mess. So simply tip them out. Going to run over these with the lawnmower, cut them up into small pieces. Now you don't have to do that. You could make your leaf mold out of the leaves as they are, but the chances are it'll take longer. So cutting up into small pieces should hopefully get you your leaf mold quicker. So you want your lawnmower on the highest cut possible because it really can choke up the blades. And you start high by starting with your lawnmower lifted up like that and you work it down. Otherwise all that happen is it'll all get caught in your blades and you won't get very far. So uh, let's start the mower and see how we do. Whilst you're in the process of doing this, because it chucks it everywhere, it's a very good idea to rake it into a condensed heap, and it's easier to go over it, or go over it again if you want. So this is nicely chopped up. See what that looks like. So that's going to now go in the tub here. Going to give this some water. It's about six liters here, that's about seven litres, one and a half gallons, something like that. Got to keep it wet for the bacteria to work. This is rainwater from the water butt, which is what I like to use. If you use tap water, chances are it's got chlorine, etc. in it, that uh, you know you, you want to allow the bacteria to multiply, to break this down. You don't want to be killing it with chlorine. So um, if you can use rainwater, it's a good idea. So I'm going to give it about another 14 litres of water. So another three gallons, something like that. Want to keep it nice and moist. Not really moist so that uh, it's sopping wet, but just so you can really feel the moisture. Maybe say you're going to get about three or four drips out of it if you squeeze it. So for example, there's no drips at all, really. Oh, there you go, look. That's feeling probably about right, but it won't have all been saturated. I want to really make sure that this is fully saturated, so I'm just moving it around a little bit. Like there, look, for example, you see that's, that's still dry. Then we'll make sure all of it gets a nice bit of water. Any bits you see that you really don't want in there, a bit of plastic there, look get that out, don't want that in there. So if you're living in an area where it's very wet, maybe a lot of rain is forecast, etc., you don't want this to get too wet because you still want the bacteria to work. So if you could maybe rig up some sort of slanting thing along there, for example, where water would run off, or you could maybe put this in a lean-to, something like that. You could also, if you've got the space, put it in a greenhouse or a polytunnel. Chances are it'd work a bit quicker in there as well. But um, keep it to that sort of moisture. Turn it once a week for the foreseeable future and your leaf mould should be made in good time. I also like to put a piece of cardboard on top like that. So this is what it looks like at the moment. Put my hand in and it is moist there. We have had some snow actually uh, earlier in the week. There we are, look at that. So I need to turn it into that one and then get some more water into it. So I'm going to turn it in uh, forkfuls or spadefuls as opposed to lifting the whole thing up. Want to let it get a nice bit of 
air into it and spread it as I do it. Here we are. You can even, you know, mix it up as you turn it. So what you can do as you're turning it, wet it. Once again, rainwater if possible. But if you wet it as you do it, you're more likely to get every last bit of it wet. You don't want to leave bits dry if you can help it. There we are, all turned into the other tub. Cover back up again with the cardboard. Hello, 10th of April. So, leaf mould is here, you see the other tub here. Now, I've actually decided, or I decided earlier in the week that I wanted to get this leaf mould quicker. So, what I need to do is increase the nitrogen content, and that is indeed what I've been doing. So, I've actually been applying a lot of urinations to this. So, urine is actually very high in nitrogen. Now, you ought to do your own research on this as to whether you think using urine is the right thing for yourself to do. Some people believe there could be you know, certain bacterias in their medications, chemicals, etc., etc., residues of drugs if you're taking medical drugs or, or whatever you know, in the urine. But uh, certainly can be said that urine has been used for centuries as a composition of compost and it can be very beneficial. So there we are, do your own research, but uh, I use it a lot. And I've started using it in my leaf mold. I also use it a lot in my compost. So I've regularly been getting as much urine on here as I can. So urine being very high in nitrogen means it is a green, whereas leaves being very high in carbon, therefore they are a brown. So mixed together, they make compost, rather, sorry, leaf mold, and indeed compost as well, that much quicker. So that's what I have been doing. And I really can see how this is breaking down much quicker now. So I'll show you what it looks like. So here it is, and look at that really resembling, well not resembling leaf mould yet, but certainly well on the way. So the urine to this really has increased the speed of the breakdown time. Now for those of you who don't want to use urine, or maybe even you do, but you want to get the nitrogen content higher, you could consider doing something like this. So these are some grass clippings, fresh cut grass clippings are very high in nitrogen. So you could chuck them in there like that, and once a week or so, keep putting some of them in. Now, some people might say, well, if you start putting grass clippings in there, then it's not a strict leaf mold anymore. It's getting towards this sort of compost territory. That is a point, but uh, just suggesting things. And another one, of course, stinging nettles as well. You could chuck them in there. You'd be best off sort of breaking these down a little bit, you know, chipping them, well, I say chipping them up, tearing them up, you know, but uh, they're also a very high source of nitrogen. You could maybe put some kitchen waste in there, you know, vegetable, waste, etc., from the garden, you could get that in there as well. Another option, of course, is you could get a watering can of rainwater, ideally, and you could leave things such as grass clippings, stinging nettles, etc., soaking in there over a few days, and then when you water, water with that, just to get that nitrogen content a little bit higher. So as always, we're going to be turning this here. So once again, you don't have to do this, but you could see that I put some grass clippings on the top there to once again increase the nitrogen content. Again, if you're interested in making pure strict leaf mould, then you probably don't want to go putting grass clippings in because it's getting towards the sort of zone of composting. But this is just a little thing that you could do if you want to make it a little bit quicker for yourself. And then once again, all you do is you just turn it like that and you mix that in and you're massively increasing the nitrogen. And if you keep doing that, you've got to remember though, that um, grass clippings, they become more of a brown after time, more of a carbon source. So you will have to keep adding them, maybe on like a weekly or two weekly basis, something like that. And by doing this, you're also increasing the volume of leaf mold, compost, etc., that you are making. And just little things that really can increase your productivity and they really don't take a lot of time either. So another thing you could do if you wanted to make it even quicker, you can increase the heat. So you could put maybe a bin liner over the top so that it holds the heat a bit more. Put this in a polytunnel or a greenhouse. So ideally I'd put this in my polytunnel in there. I might do it in a few weeks or so when I get some space in there, can't do it now. Put it up against a south facing wall or fence, something like that once again, help hold the heat in there. But uh, it's well on the way now, shouldn't be too long. Cardboard on top. 
So here I am on Tuesday the 19th of April and I've taken a look at this and it really is starting to work now. So I've turned it over, I just put my spade here and uh, turned it. So I've not turned it since I made my last instalment in this video. So all I've done really is I just got my spade like this. I didn't turn it into the other tub or anything. And I just shook it about a bit, turned it round just to let a bit of air in, to allow that bacteria to continue to work. So I have been applying a lot of urinations to this, several each day, and it really has boosted the, the speed. It really has worked. So the extra nitrogen has been very beneficial here. That's not everyone's thing they want to do, as I stated before. You know, you could do the nitrogen water I told you about, you know, by getting your rainwater in a watering can and putting some grass in there and then watering it with that to increase the nitrogen content. But uh, I'll let you have a look at it and you can see now what it looks like. So there it is, really dark now. I'll try and get you a bit. That's what it looks like. So it's certainly underway. So uh, give it a few more weeks and uh, we'll see what it looks like. So here we are on the 30th of May and uh, let's have a look at it. So I've not added any urine to this probably for about three weeks, maybe even up to a month or so. And it's looking really good actually. I'll show you, I'll give you a little close up and uh, you can have a, a good look at it. So that's what it's looking like at this time. So every week I have been turning it I've been more mixing it than taking it out and putting it back in again. But all I've been doing is just getting in there like this and turning it over. And it really is looking, looking leaf mold like at the moment. So probably another month or so, and this will be more or less there. There's no need for me to add any additional urine to it at this time. It's breaking down lovely and uh, it can also be considered a good idea to uh, not add urine too close to the time that uh, you're actually going to be growing your plants, crops or whatever. Using your growing medium, you've made. So there we are. Hello, 14th of June and the lovely leaf mould is here. So I'm going to be planting into this today. So since I last made an instalment on this video, I've not added any urine to this for probably a month or so now, maybe even a little bit longer than that. And I haven't turned it now for about two weeks. Prior to that, I was turning it once a week or so. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with how it looks and I'm now going to be setting some plants in it. So let's have a look at what we've got. Where did I put them? Right, over here, I have market more cucumbers. Now the plants don't look the healthiest. They've been in these uh, containers here for quite a while now. Really could do the water actually. <laughs> and here we've got some Cusa courgette, so market more cucumber and Cusa courgette. I also have some seeds here in my pocket. And these are radishes variety, Sicily giant. So we're going to be getting some of this leaf mold here, putting it in some containers and planting out and seeing how they do. So looking at the finished article, now you can see it's quite dry looking because I've not added any water to it for some time now and uh, that's what it looks like so I hope you can you can see that I hope that's coming out well right let's uh, fill up our containers right here they are so filled up ideally a little bit more would have been good but I only made what I made and I'm grateful for that so uh, let's put these where they're going to be going for the planting stage so down here going to water these a little bit there is some moisture still in this leaf mould, but uh, we're going to uh, add a bit more. It's very hot and dry at the moment. So in this one here, we're going to have a Cousa courgette, Trista white, and that's going to go just in there like so. We're going to have market more cucumbers. Let's see how they do. Here we are in the polytunnel. So let's plant the, whoops, radish seeds. So we're just going to water the leaf mold in the container here. 
sow our seeds. So all we're going to do is just make a little drill in the middle, try and level this a little bit. Just to make a little drill in the middle and scatter some of our Sicily giant seeds. Water again. Good thing is, because it's so warm, they should germinate really quickly. So let's uh, see what everything we've planted and see how it all, ugh, see how it all does. Hello, Dan here, and it's the 1st of August. So standing here in front of my leaf mold substitute and the crops in which I am growing in it. So you can see I put them up here in the pots and also in trays of water here on top of one of my water containers, basically because I'm getting short on ground space which to put my pots, etc, etc. So got a nice crop set, plenty of flowers as hopefully you could see here. And I'm going to take the camera now, we're going to look up the top and you could see just uh, how lovely these are cropping in the leaf mold substitute. So we shall start here, look, and we'll just uh, pan the camera across. So we've got an absolutely lovely cucumber there, and we've got an even bigger cucumber here. So let's harvest those, and as I stated, you can see the lovely yellow flowers there. So certainly plenty of crop to come. So we've got to male flowers here. You can see this one here is a female flower, has the... Uh, fruitlet behind the flower using this uh, these scissors there you go so that's uh, cucumber one we'll call it we shall harvest hope you can see that once again cucumber number two look at them look nothing wrong with them is there and look at the radishes here so let's see what we've got here, there we go. Let's pull up some radishes. Yep, lovely job. Look, there's a heart shaped radish. Look, isn't that wonderful? Oh, well, there we go. And on there, look. There is some smaller ones, but you probably remember that I, you know, did set these quite thick, so it'd be quite difficult to get a big crop or big, you know, lots of big radishes. Anyway, I think you're getting the idea there. You can Get some nice, there you go, look at this one. Look. That's root crop there, look. And we'll just go over to here. Got to be very careful, it's a bit perilous up here. And there you are, look at that lovely Cousa courgette there. So certainly got a beautiful Cousa courgette there. And I'm actually going to leave that and see just how big I can get it. So if you look at the leaf mold substitute compost, Hasn't sunk really much since I planted the plants in them. And uh, yeah, so far successful. Hello, 18th of August, and I'm going to be concluding this leaf mold substitute video now. And we're going to have another harvest from the cucumber plants and also from the courgette plants. So we shall, we shall start here, look, look at that, look. Lovely, uh, handy, cucumber right there. Now that's uh, certainly a nice cucumber, isn't it? So we'll just put this down here and we'll have a look at what else we've got. So I uh, don't know if you can see me up here, but uh, yep, we shall have this one here. So right here we have, right here we have another cucumber. So that's absolutely wonderful. And let's see what else we've got up here. Right. Well, we'll have the courgette now, methinks. Let's have that down. Don't know if these scissors will be able to get through here, but we'll try it. There we go, just should break away. There we are. So this here, we have we have a courgette there, so that's absolutely wonderful. And let's see if we've got any other goodies we can have from here. Ah. Another little uh, cucumber there. That's positively grand. So, anything else? Oh, yep, yeah, we've got some baby 
cucumbers here. These ones look a little bit on the uh, shriveled side. I think these plants are past their best now, but uh, you know we can include those because there will be a little meal or part of a meal there. So let's uh, see what we've picked today. So we have a pretty good courgette there, variety Trista White. Here we have some really nice cucumbers, variety market more 76. So what we'll do is we'll get one of these down and we'll see what the growing medium looks like now. Anyway, yeah, there we go. So got a nice bit of a leaf mold substitute that uh, I can keep using. So anyway, there we go. You can see that uh, you know, the mixture worked. And of course, one could also add things to this if they wanted to, but uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. Harvest there, let me know what you think. See you in the next video.